things I did not think about when I first learned how to drive. I wonder how the use of different radio technologies is going to affect the automotive communication spectrum. And I wonder how Wi-Fi 6 will allow for more efficient use of this spectrum. Nope. I mostly thought, how am I ever going to unstick that button to make the tape finally eject from the tape player? It's been jammed in there for years. Heck, I don't even think infotainment was a word then. And I'm really not that old. Oh my, how far we have come. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Today's automotive designs must contend with a variety of challenges, including scalability, security, software integration, and the increased use of different radio technologies. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Frederick Lungard from Ublox, Patrick Stilwell from NXP, and I explore how the use of modules can help address a variety of automotive design challenges and the benefits that Ublox's Jody W3 host-based modules can bring to your next automotive application. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic. Hi, Frederick. Thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Amelia. Nice joining you. And hi, Patrick. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Nice to meet you. Excellent. Okay. So we're talking about telematics connectivity and how we can easily integrate infotainment today. But before we get started... Can you give us a quick update on your two companies? So first, Patrick, tell me a little bit about NXP. Yeah, thanks, Amelia. NXP Semiconductors, we're located in the Netherlands with a secondary corporation I'll call in Austin, Texas. NXP has been around for quite some time, and it's more of a smarter, safer, enabling sustainable worldwide applications uh, through innovation. NXP is a world leader in secure connectivity solutions, let's say for some of your credit cards and your passports that you use on a daily basis. What we're really featuring is pushing the boundaries in the automotive industry. But in addition to that, other advancing technologies include some of the mobility, smart home and smart city segments as we drive into these self-driving cars and, of course, separately on the industrial side. And so really with all that, the markets and the technological advances coming, we really have been driving for growth as we go through the years. And Frederick, you're from Ublox, right? Can you give my audience a quick review of what Ublox is all about? Yes, sure. Thanks, Amelia. Ublox, we are a 25-year-old Swiss-based company with a head office in Zurich. Our 1300 employees are spread globally and we started off as a company working with positioning technologies but over the years we have expanded so today we have technologies uh, not only in the positioning or GNSS area but also in the cellular area and what we will talk about here today meaning short range or Wi-Fi Bluetooth products. And then we do offer also cloud-based uh, service products on top of these technologies. Our main core markets where we focus is, of course, automotive, but also the industrial professional area is big, and we do have presence in the consumer products. So when looking at automotive applications in particular, I understand you want to start with the microprocessor, right? So why is that? Yes, that's a good question, Amelia. The, the microprocessor is basically the brain of the application when it comes to inside the vehicle. And this can be the instrument cluster that the driver looks at. And even more importantly, some of the in-vehicle infotainment system in all today's cars. As we move forward, the technology becomes more and more important and the processor has to help drive the innovation for this. It can include like a heads-up display, a rear seat entertainment displays that we have. And really, as we have the full digital electronic e-cockpit, as we move forward with some of the newer vehicles coming into the industry. And more importantly, as we move forward, 
driver occupant monitoring systems. You could monitor the driver drowsiness. You can have them wake up by sending a vibration to the steering wheel and other different ways of waking up the driver. And then for occupant monitoring systems, this could be uh, as simple as an animal left in the back seat or a child, of course. And it just makes the driver aware that there's something moving in the back seat in case uh, something was left there unintended. And so as we move forward, the microprocessor itself can be used with this e-cockpit application. But as we move forward with telematics and other connectivities with smart vehicles, communicating with one another, smart cities where you're communicating really with uh, street lights, and of course, other standalone applications. It could be displays for backup cameras, or really as we move forward, we're actually going to have cameras in the mirrors that the driver uses. So it's really important to choose the correct microprocessor to help transfer all of this data. And the iDetamix family of devices is able to process all the data that's required. Very cool. Now, what are you seeing as the biggest challenges when it comes to the implementation of automotive applications? As the wireless communication, both to and from the car increases, it brings along quite a few new challenges. For example, the spectrum getting crowded. And also these wireless technologies, they are evolving rapidly and at much quicker pace than the development of a new car, which is, uh, of course, a challenge when it comes to the OEMs and the car manufacturers that want to be able to offer the latest connectivity technologies to the users. Yeah, one of the main challenges that we have as we implement some of our hardware from NXP, working with partners like Ublox, the software implementation to make it more transparent and easy for all of our customers to implement any kind of hardware that they wish to put on their PC boards. So really working with uh, Ublox for really almost up to 20 years, we're able to release a lot of our Linux BSPs as we move forward. And we've been doing this for quite some time. And we work in parallel with the Ublox team and their hardware. And this is all tested in-house prior to release to the general public to really help the engineers who do the development really makes it much easier and faster time to market working together with Ublox and NXP. Okay, so I've heard a lot about using radio technologies in automotive applications. What are you seeing in terms of radio technologies in this space? Well, it is actually getting crowded in the car. So especially the use of the 2.4 gigahertz band with a limited number of channels for Wi-Fi as well as sharing it with Bluetooth. And that is facing more and more congestion situations. So here, the use of Wi-Fi 6 really helps the situation, not only because of using the 5 gigahertz band, but also due to the introduction of OFDMA technology, the orthogonal frequency division multiple access technology. It's a high-order digital modulation scheme which actually enables more users to communicate simultaneously. Okay, so here on Chalk Talk, we've talked a lot about modules over the years. But what are you seeing as the biggest benefits using modules in these kinds of designs? When we are discussing with our automotive customers about this in order to understand their perceived key value of using modules, we get quite widespread feedback. But all in all, we can summarize it into three main categories. First being the quick time to market. So a module is a pre-certified and pre-qualified functional entity that you can plug in and integrate into your automotive system. It could be, a, for example, a connectivity domain controller, TCU, or an infotainment system. Second one being actually low total cost of ownership. So using a module allows you to have less complex electronic design, less production testing, and also lower inventory costs. And the third one, which is maybe 
for many of our customers, the most important one is that you have a solution that is, in some aspects, future-proof. So by having a form factor approach, meaning that we offer new technology in the same form factor module with the same size and the same pinout as older technologies, this reduces the time and cost to introduce a new technology to the market. It's also maintaining the certification and qualification over the entire system lifetime. So we can summarize everything in these three main categories. Quick time to market, low total cost of ownership, but also future proof. That makes sense. Now, what about the software integration part? How is NXP and uBlocks helping engineers here? NXP working with uBlocks, we check out and validate all the software prior to release as we release them into the Android and Linux BSPs on our NXP website. So really the implementation and the challenges are limited because the hardware and the software has already been checked out. We continue to implement these drivers into our releases as we move forward, even with some of Jody family of products moving forward over the next couple of years. Okay, great. Now, there are a variety of different safety and security challenges to deal with when it comes to automotive designs, right? That's a good point, Amelia. It's really important as we move forward, really, in the automotive industry specifically, when it comes to functional safety and security, and of course, reliability as we move forward. With the IDENMX family of products, specifically Quad Max, Quad Plus, we have multiple cores, uh, four A53s, two A72s. Also, we have to have the performance and the bandwidth to make sure that each customer's unique use case can be well-established on the chip itself. So from a uh, functional safety standpoint, most OEMs nowadays are requiring some ASIL-B within the cab of the vehicle which is what the IDENMX 8 helps drive a lot of those displays. And so really the, the ASIL-B implementation were compatible with a lot of our customers as they implement the ASIL-B required by all their customers. And then uh, secondly, as we move forward, some of our new IDENMX products will have safety islands, which are isolated from the rest of the chip. And that's really what customers are looking for is some pure isolation from both the hardware and software perspective. And then from a security side, the IDMX family is robust when it comes to the isolation of security itself. We have a separate HSM or security module on the chip, and this is isolated from all the other aspects so that the customer can securely monitor any vulnerabilities or any hackers that may try and get into the vehicle. And this just doesn't start at the end when the customer gets the product. As you can see with our product lifecycle, we begin with a secure boot and a secure storage uh, when the customer initiates the booting process in the part. Then it comes to a key protection, both from NXP and then customers themselves can implement key protection where they're the only ones that have the secrets to the key. So the secure debug, if they have to do some debugging on the part or on the vehicle. And then, of course, tamper detection continues to watch any kind of black hatters that try and get into your system from either a hardware aspect or maybe even software. So you monitor voltage or temperature. And then finally, before we ship any parts out to customers, we put additional manufacturing protections in the device. So it's the entire product life cycle. Customers continue to upgrade on their side from software, able to do over the air updates if things do change as they have vehicles in the field. And as we continue to move forward with self-driving cars and electric vehicles, there's more and more challenges that we continue to improve on as we move forward into the market. Fantastic. Now, can you give me some details about the Jody W3? I'm happy to do so. Jody W3 is the multi-radio Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module from uBlocks. 
And it's based on the NXP chipsets Q9098 or AW690, depending on which variant we are talking about. And uh, it supports Wi-Fi 6, meaning 802.11ax technology. It brings you the higher throughput and higher efficiency. And this is due to the 1024 QAM modulation. And you get the throughput, especially when combining this together with the MIMO setup. You can have more clients, as we talked about before, due to the OFDMA technology to avoid congestion. It introduces also lower latency, which is a benefit for many applications. We have a longer range, and that's due to the new fire headers. Also, less power consumption implemented through the target wake time functionality. Yeah, and that was mainly the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. And it supports the simultaneous dual band, meaning supporting both the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz band at the same time in a dual Mac configuration, and also then 2x2 MIMO configuration. Also supporting the Bluetooth and Bluetooth LE 5.3 standard, and Wi-Fi VPA3 security, which is an important feature now when moving along with more secure automotive implementations. In addition to these, there are some more specific automotive highlights such as the Wi-Fi DFS master with zero weight. And this is all implemented into an automotive graded module supporting the ACQ 104 qualification. And the chipset that it's based on is then an ACQ100 graded chipset. It all comes in a very compact form factor. The 13.8 times 19.8 millimeter form factor allows for very flexible implementation also into very small uh, areas. And also, as we said before, it's important to have a compatibility with older and newer technologies. So meaning that this form factor is maintained throughout not only the life cycle of the product, but also with older and newer technologies. So it seems easy for customer to address either multiple segment or to move along with next generation technology implemented on the same or a similar PCB. And it's designed, qualified and manufactured as per automotive standards. And for example, this combined system solution is an example of using an IWMX8 microprocessor with the UBlox Jody wireless module and with the other connectivity features that are available to support the overall solution. All right. Well, Frederick and Patrick, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes. Thank you, Amelia. Thank you very much, Amelia. It was nice talking to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.